I'm outside uh, different doctor's rooms now, completely different from others I've mentioned. Uh, I also won't mention the name of this doctor. I had met the doctor on quite a number of occasions. Now, this was Cecilia's diabetic doctor. But with the scenarios that I had encountered during the time that I knew Cecilia and also revolving around this doctor, they didn't add up to me, especially with a very confused look on the doctor's face when I would say things to her about Cecilia's health. Um, quite simply, the, the confused look on her face was one of that she honestly did not know what I was talking about. When I had first met this doctor, Cecilia told me this was her heart and lung specialist. Now, I didn't go at that point and inquire every doctor's degree and special uh, specialized field a uh, field sorry uh, I mean she went Cecilia went to so many doctors and I just gathered and as long as she was being looked after basically so in the beginning I was led to believe this was a doctor who specialized in anything to do with heart and lungs and Cecilia would apparently have regular checkups with this doctor and regular tests because her heart and lungs were continuously failing and this would be because of bad health in general and more so because the occult would supposedly be attacking her heart and lungs on a regular basis. Now there was a few scenarios regarding this doctor. One which I think I'll relate first um, which if I think about it now it's actually quite funny because Cecilia, without me realizing it, I had Cecilia stuck in a corner uh, that she couldn't sway away from and she had to change her whole story, at least regarding certain aspects of her health. Now, when I had met Cecilia, she apparently had something like 42 different extreme allergies. Um, so she would be allergic to anything and everything if you want to put it that way the very air itself was a touch and go for her because it could have depended on the dust the pollen the grass you name it um, so 42 allergies on the list and this number continued and continued for quite a number of months that I had known Cecilia and uh, eventually Cecilia went for updated tests and she just received a folder from the doctor, she went back to her flat and she didn't even open it. Eventually I asked her, you know, did you look at it, like have you seen what the results are? And she was very carefree, she honestly wasn't bothered and she said to me, you can have a look at it if you want. So I proceeded to open it and I read the doctor's report, most of which I definitely did not understand. But what I did understand is that Cecilia's allergy count was not 52. It was not even a handful. And it was very insignificant things in comparison to what she was claiming to be allergic to. Now, in that moment, in having read the report, which was quite an extensive report, and having believed up until that point that Cecilia was allergic to 52 different things, I got quite excited, uh, so I Im immediately said to Cecilia, you know, you, your allergies have gotten better, you're only allergic to these few things, you know, your health has improved. I can tell you now Cecilia was not expecting for that to be in the doctor's report, and the look on her face, you could see she was urgently looking for a backup plan, because here I have read uh, basically evidence from a doctor that she's not allergic to 52 things and what she's allergic to is actually nothing in comparison. So I was all hyped up about it. I was happy. Uh, my best friend was not going to die of potentially everything if you want to sum it up like that. Cecilia on the other hand was urgently and you could see her as clear as day on her in her mind that she was searching for 
a backup plan or an alternative route to use other than allergies because after that doctor's report there was no mention of allergies uh, okay I stand to be corrected it was very rarely brought up uh, maybe once every few months uh, she would bring up allergies but it would be uh, grass or dust and that would be it so without knowing it uh, without realizing it I had kind of dismantled one of her, the things that she used to fool people um, another scenario that happened with this specific doctor is that I had gone with Cecilia to the doctor's rooms and I wasn't allowed inside I had to wait in reception so Cecilia walks in and she's perfectly fine and eventually it must have been half an hour to an hour later she walks back out still perfectly fine the doctor seemed perfectly fine no cause for alarm the doctor was friendly um, nothing to be suspicious of as we are leaving the doctor's rooms Cecilia says to me that once she got into the doctor's rooms the occult had attacked her lungs she had stopped breathing she had collapsed on the floor the doctor freaked out and revived her now in all honesty looking back I think the doctor at the very least would look a bit distressed after a scenario like that not happy-go-lucky if you wanna or if I want to portray how the doctor seemed uh, after that scenario or after that apparent scenario should I say then there was another two scenarios two important scenarios at the very least with this doctor now Cecilia had been booked into the hospital across from her she had led me to believe that she needed a heart operation and um, it was touch and go it's critical and so on and this was the doctor obviously because it's the heart specialist that was gonna see the whole operation through so I had to <laughs> I was I was fooled into paying for the, the operation the supposed heart operation I did at that point question though shouldn't a heart operation cost more because Cecilia asked me for 5,000 Rand technically a heart operation would and should cost a lot more and um, Cecilia then said to me oh no that's just the remainder if she needs to pay for medical aid but months after the scenario I actually found out she never had medical aid Cecilia did go into hospital she was admitted I was required to be there alongside Rhea that morning that she was that Cecilia was admitted and then uh, I had to come back later on now the interesting part of all of this is when I came back later it was towards late afternoon because now the heart operation supposed heart operation was over with Cecilia was perfectly fine she was awake she was happy um, nothing to be suspicious of and the doctor came into the room to check on her and I made a comment to the doctor about Cecilia's heart and lungs and I went on about this for about say 10-15 minutes talking about how critical Cecilia's heart and lungs are and I'm glad this doctor is looking after her and so on this doctor did not say one word to me she this doctor just looked at me completely confused dumbfounded had absolutely no idea what I was talking about and when the doctor looked at Cecilia Cecilia just laughed um, I don't know what the doctor thought of the whole scenario uh, I didn't even know what to make of the doctor's response but I wasn't focusing on it because I was just glad Cecilia was okay and then about a month later Cecilia was required to go in yet again for another operation and it was for her lungs now again I was asked to pay 
and again I questioned shouldn't an operation a lung operation cost substantially more it was around the same price as a apparent heart operation according to Cecilia and again I was told no medical aid only requires that much now the interesting part looking back now is I was required to be by Cecilia the morning she went in but she did not require me to come back later on and any further further doctor's trips for this specific doctor I was never there with her um, I can only think that the reason would be is perhaps the doctor was asking why I was going on about Cecilia's lungs and heart and the scenario that had happened with me talking about it after the first operation had made things very awkward, uncomfortable, um, something that had to later be explained to this poor doctor because the doctor was honestly confused. So it would have been better just to make me stay at home, basically. That's my only assumption in all of this. But interesting to also note that with both these operations, I'd heard nurses and the doctor say that it was completely impossible for them to keep Cecilia in bed because every time they walked out the room she would go downstairs to smoke or they would be going through the hospital trying to find her only to find her on her couch in her flat watching TV still with her drip pipe and bag. Now for someone who has had an, a heart operation or a lung operation uh, and someone whose health is failing pretty much every second of every single day she's doing very well Cecilia is doing very well after an operation and I say that with complete sarcasm um, that didn't add up but that's exactly what happened and she also wasn't in hospital for long it was merely 24 to 48 hours at most 72 hours for the one but yeah none of this added up looking back at the scenarios with this specific doctor I can I can only imagine the question in the doctor's mind and the nonsense explanation that Cecilia would have given the doctor uh, I mean Cecilia already at that point was lying to everybody about everything and by the time I left her uh, and had started to realize the truth behind everything I knew that her lies would eventually catch up with her because there were scenarios where after I had left her she was apparently diagnosed with cancer but then miraculously healed of cancer then she was diagnosed with a whole bunch of other things critical things only to be miraculously healed after um, the reason why she would be or at least allow people to believe that she would be miraculously healed is to display uh, to people that or people in her group at least that she is doing things uh, I'm not sure how to explain this but she tried to get everyone to believe that she was called by God for this sacred mission of leaving the occult and um, living this type of martyr life and so on so in her miraculous recoveries she was trying to show everybody that God was so much on her side that he would even raise her from the dead like I'd mentioned in a previous audio and heal her of these critical critical illnesses but then at the same time she still suffered horribly when she wanted to basically and then it even reached the point that Cecilia had told so many people so many different lies about the same topics including within her own group that she was actually forgetting to t uh, forgetting what she had told to each person and then she just ruled it off to 
memory loss or some other nonsense like that. And sad to say, the people in her group actually believed her. But I think at that point, when she was claiming memory loss and all of that, that was long after I had left. That was probably about three to four years after I had left. By that point with Miranda and the others having been with Cecilia for so long, so wholeheartedly swept up in her lies, uh, I don't think they could even tell the difference between anything she said anymore, even as something as dumb as that. But then again, um, I in all honesty, and I'll be very honest in saying this, that if I'd have still been friends with Cecilia and she had have told me that it's memory loss, I more than likely would have believed her too, because I know the extent of her manipulation, I know the extent of her foolproof techniques and methods, how brilliant she is as an actress in whatever she wants to accomplish. I know that I would have believed her, and I hate admitting that, but I know I would have. She was just that brilliant. But at least I wasn't there that long, and I knew that only time would tell when her lies would eventually catch her out.